Hi guys, so today I'm doing a video over my everyday over the top makeup look. Um, so let's get right into it. We're gonna start off by putting some primer on and I love two specific primers. I love the professional pore primer and this is so good for if you have like big pores, um, which I do, but I also have clogged pores. So I have to be careful with this. I like to mix that with the Benefit, the professional matte rescue primer. This one is more if you have oily skin. Okay, so I usually just put this the same place. I put the pore primer, but I make sure to like blend it out all the way out here just because I like the way it feels. These two primers work really good for me. I put on two foundations, which some people are like, well, that's a little too much, but I've honestly found my holy grail foundation. But the thing is, I can't use it by itself. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation, the stick foundation. And it's in the shade tan. You get a lot of foundation in here. I've been using this for like about a month or so. Um, and I haven't run out of it yet. So I probably could use this for like two or three months. So I tried it on its own. It didn't work out for me. So I mixed it. I wasn't going to give up on it because I really like the formula of it. Um, but I mixed it with foundations. And honestly, no foundation looks good on me unless I put this stick foundation under it. So if you use the Anastasia Beverly Hills stick foundation and you feel like it just doesn't work on you um, because maybe it's too dry you can't blend it out very well well if you mix it with any like liquid foundation it works so well so my two favorite liquid foundations to blend it with um, to mix it with are the LA girl foundations both of them they're really really good um, whenever I don't want such a matte matte day I go with the LA girl pro coverage foundation this is more like um, a illuminating foundation um, and this is more for like normal to dry skin or dry to normal skin I feel like this would be great um, for it and I like to mix it with the LA girl pro matte so if I want my foundation to last a little bit longer for my oils not to show through then I use the LA girl pro matte um, and both of these are very very cheap foundations they I think this one's like eight dollars I think they're both like eight or nine dollars um, and I just get them at Ulta and then I got this one at Sephora and it's 20 like 25 dollars I think or 20 dollars which is honestly not that bad for a high-end foundation. And I put like three little stripes on my face like that. And I put one stripe on my chin, one there. Today, I think I'm going to use the LA Girl Pro Matte just because I'm going to be outside a lot of the day. And I don't want my foundation to kind of just melt off. Um, honest to whatever, this foundation on its own, I hated it on its own. It just, I hated it. I tried it so many times and I hated it. And then I put it over this one like I mix it with this one and I love these two together do about two pumps of this one and I just dot it on my face sorry guys ladies going crazy in the other room and I grab my um, real techniques um, beauty sponge kind of I press and then drag I dab and then drag just to kind of blend everything together else that I really really like to do as well I like to grab this brush by um, Equate Beauty and it's the flat kabuki brush and I just kind of like blend everything in it's also like an easier way of doing it um, and you actually like I, in the back of my mind whenever I do it with this brush I actually know that everything's kind of blended together then I've really really been liking the Tarte concealers um, I just been using these like crazy lately and I have them in light medium and medium just because medium is a little too dark for me and light medium is a little too light for me grab the light one and I just I always scrape some of it off because you always get too much on this doe applicator and I make sure to go on my nose like this and then go over and then kind of just go down and fill in that space and it's just a technique that I like and has always worked for me. Same thing to the other side. I go down the bridge of my nose. I go my forehead, the chin, and then the eyelids. And then just on the outer corner of my eyes, just because I like that nice and blended right there, I'll go in with the medium and kind of just on the outer portion of it, just kind of flick it out and then I go over it just a little bit on this part of my face I know it kind of looks a little dramatic right now but it really does make a difference and I'm just gonna take my real techniques sponge 
And then what I do is first I blend out like the this half of it and then I go in, I bring it in and then just bring it back out and I kind of just do that back and forth like that. So bring it in. And then I also make sure to just bring it down to like this part of my face. I'm so sad because it looks like it's going to rain and it's my day off and I don't want it to rain on my day off. Like it's been so pretty these past few days and of course on my day off it would just kind of, it would rain. One of my go-to powders has been the Airspun Loose Face Powder been one of my favorite ones but whenever I'm taking like photography pictures or like flash photography or anything like that I'll mix a little bit of this banana powder by makeup sorry I have like powder all over my hand but this is the revolution luxury baking powder in banana and it's very banana 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 east so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna mix a little bit of that banana powder in with the air spun naturally neutral I just like to take my sponge and the reason why I like to take a sponge you can take a brush but I feel like with the sponge you're able to press things into your skin so I just like to grab it and just kind of press I look up and I just press the powder that's what I do first is I press the powder into my skin um, and then also it helps with the oil so I like to just blend it around here press it into there and then you want to keep that kind of triangle underneath your eye just because it'll make it look a little bit more like pulled up if that makes sense it gives you like a little facelift and I do use quite a bit of powder for myself just because I'm so oily if you're less oily or if you're more on the drier side you don't want to use as much powder as I'm using um, just because you might feel a little too dry but if you are more on the oily side I suggest that you use as much powder as you want the reason why you want to press is because if you press it kind of just mixes and blends into the rest of your um, makeup and then on my nose I use a lot of powder on my nose because girl my nose is so oily it's like one of my most like insecure places on my face is my nose just because it's super oily so the powder kind of just sit on my nose just because it's so oily so I'm just gonna set right here and brighten that up and then I'm just gonna brighten up my forehead and then I'm going to set my eyelids then you want to set your face what I've been setting my face with and what I really, really what I've really been liking there's a lot of good setting powders out there you don't have to use this one I've just been using this one which is the bare Min minerals bare pro powder foundation this just this gives me a little bit more of a coverage um, I'm just kind of more of that full coverage kind of girl right now so I just love all the coverage that I can get so you don't have to get a um, powder foundation whatsoever. You can get more of a louder, lighter, a lighter powder. You don't have to get, like I said, a powder foundation or anything. I just use a huge brush right here by this one's by Equate Beauty as well, and this is their powder brush. And I just kind of press that into my skin, and then I drag it down to my neck, my temples. same brush I know it's weird but with the same brush I just kind of dust away that powder on my nose and underneath my eyes I'm going to grab a big fluffy brush this one is by elf it's a total face brush and I'm gonna grab my favorite bronzer this is the hula bronzer um, by benefit and I really really like it um, I also found these little bronzing um, what, palettes loose things I don't know what to call these but I found these at TJ Maxx for like four dollars each um, and I got a lighter one, I got a darker one, and then I got this one, which is more in the medium tone. This adds a lot of warmth to my skin. If you see this, this one's more of a neutral bronzer. This one's more of a warm kind of bronzer. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll mix a little bit of the Hoola bronzer with this one. This is in um, Nutmeg, and it's from the Contouring Kit by Anastasia. I always kind of pull my hair back, and I... Just with the big fluffy brush and what a big fluffy brush does is it just kind of blends everything out for you so you don't have to worry about it if you use more of a more dense brush for example you never i would never use this for um bronzer just because it would be harder to blend it out like once it's set you cannot blend it out just because it's going to leave it like very harsh lines so the more fluffy your brush is the less work you have to do and the better it is for you 
So I just kind of go like that back and forth. Love to bronze up my forehead and it's super tiny and some people are still like ask me why I bronze up my forehead because my forehead is so tiny. I don't know, I just like the look of it and I feel like it's not me unless I bronze up my forehead. I always hit right there and then I always make sure, even though it's a big fluffy brush, I always make sure to hit my nose just because whenever it is time to contour, it just kind of helps it blend all together. So then you wanna hit this part. We're gonna contour our face. I like this fan brush right here by Equate Beauty. It's the fan highlighter brush. I don't use it for highlighter, but I do use it for contouring. So I go into my favorite contouring thing, which is the Hula Bronzer, just because it's so neutral. And the more you add, the darker, the more intense it gets, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna take my fan brush, and I'm just gonna, do you guys see where that line is naturally there for me, like right here? Well, I'm just gonna follow that line. Um, and I'm just gonna go back and forth with my fan brush first and I'm going to put it on, on its side and I'm just going to go like this to blend that out but this to kind of give me the contour and it just kind of is so effortlessly I just kind of keep going back and forth like that with the bronzer just to contour my face grab just an angled brush this one is by Sephora and I'm just going to grab a little bit of that product and kind of chisel out my nose contour a little bit more and it's not hard you guys it's just having about like it's about having a light hand and being smart about where you place it um it can go by really fast like for real like that's all i do for my nose contouring and we're done you don't want to use so much product that you go way overboard you just want to use a little bit that's it then i go back in with my sponge and a little bit of that air spun naturally neutral powder mixed with the revolution banana powder and I hit the sides of my nose like this, just to kind of clean up that contour a little bit, and then the top of my nose as well. Um, and if you guys can see, like I have this line right, these two lines right here that I haven't touched with the powder, um, and that's where my contour is gonna be. And then I like to hit this part of my cheek, just to kind of bring out that contour a little bit. For my eyebrows, I've always, and I cannot get away from this, but this is the Smashbox Photo Matte Eyes, um, and it just, it's so pretty. It's such a pretty palette. I just grab a little brush like this. This is by BH Cosmetics. I like to take my spoolie and the first thing that I like to do is kind of comb through my eyebrows. So, you don't have to get the Smashbox palette. You can use any brown, dark brown powder that you have, eyeshadow. You can use it on your eyebrows. Um, and that's what I used to do whenever I was broken. I would have just like a little palette that has brown on it. I would just put that on my eyebrows. Um, but, not that I'm not still... Not that I'm not broke now, but okay. <laughs> um, so I just grab a little bit of this and I focus this on the bottom. I just kind of follow my shape. I don't really do much to my eyebrows except, I'll tell you guys what I do. I grab a little shaver, like shaving thing and I just kind of like shave my eyebrows down. And then I'll like shape them from here. I'll shave this right here. If you guys liked a video on that, be glad to show you guys but I just kind of like shave down shave here and then I always shave like in between my eyebrows that's it I don't like wax pluck anything like that I usually don't try to take anything from down here just because I really don't have anything down there so so I like to just go over the shape of it and I do like to go pretty like intense with my eyebrows and then but the trick is just to have a light hand and it's always your technique. I always start on the outer half of my brows because I feel like it's a better technique. You never really want to start with a whole bunch of product on this part of your eye. Um, just because, like I said, it's all about the technique. So then I do the bottom. I go to the top and I kind of just line the top of it. And then I do the side of it with little strokes I get and then I always pack a lot of the product in here and I kind of just go back and forth the shadow then with no extra product just with what I have on my brow now or on my brush now I flick it towards the inner part of my eye as you can see that was no extra product I'm just going back and fanning my brush back and forth And I usually just like to comb through the front of my brows a lot. And then I go in and comb. And I always like to make my part right here a little bit longer. And I always seem to do it just because 
it just my eyebrows look better whenever I just elongate that a little bit we're gonna be adding some blush the blush that I will be using is this Neutrogena healthy skin blush in 40 bronze and it's been one of my favorite blushes it just gives a little tint of like pinky blushiness um, as you guys can see the color I'm gonna grab this bronze nutmeg color from Anastasia. I'm gonna grab a fluffy brush like so, and I'm just gonna sweep this in my crease and kind of all over my lid. So just back and forth like that. Before I add mascara, I'm gonna add a little bit of setting powder and then press it into my skin. I've been loving this Flower Seal the Deal Long Lasting Setting Spray. It's a matte setting spray. I love this spray. I think it's the spritzer. I love the way it keeps my makeup together. I really, really like this spray. Okay, so then I'm just going to grab my sponge. And actually, first, I just like to kind of let it dry where it is. Just because the spritzer is so good, I don't need to worry about, like, clumps of it getting on my face. So I just like to let it kind of, like, settle into my skin. And then, like always, I like to press it into my skin just because... Like I said, it kind of just melts everything together. My favorite mascara is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Waterproof Mascara. I just kind of wiggle it at the root and then kind of drag it up. Wiggle, drag up, wiggle, drag up, wiggle. For the lip color, Maybelline. Super Stay Matte Ink. This is in Seductress. Okay guys, so now the look is all complete. And this is what my everyday over the top makeup look looks like. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you guys. Bye.